Hi there, my name is Colin, and in this presentation I want to give you an overview of the AppScan architecture for on-premise products. With this we're going to look at a number of features, but we're specifically going to focus at high level on each of the components that make up all the different license types and how they would integrate in a typical on-premise solution. So let's start by looking at AppScan Standard. AppScan Standard is a desktop client used for doing dynamic analysis. And it's the easiest of our products to install. It typically just needs to have a license. Um, and with version 10, we're working with a FlexNet or FNO license server. This is a cloud-based offering which allows the license to be picked up from the machine to the license, assuming that we have the connectivity over port 443 to the license server. This will allow us then to scan our applications. And we are doing this in a dynamic way. So we're testing the applications, looking at the URLs, and going through the login information for each of those applications. And those would be tested over ports 80, 443, um, or HTTP, HTTPS. As we move beyond that, we and as we increase our foothold, we introduce AppScan Enterprise. AppScan Enterprise is really sits at the center of a lot of the AppScan large-scale deployments. It installs on a Windows-based server. Um, it can install on a physical machine or on a VM. And our current minimum requirements are around eight gigabytes of RAM on a quad core with 500 gigabytes of space. Now that space might vary depending on how you do the deployment, but it certainly will feature better. Um, the more memory you can give it will we'll certainly benefit the AppScan Enterprise piece. It, AppScan Enterprise on its own needs to also work and be installed with a SQL Server database. It's possible to install the SQL Server, uh, SQL Server on the same machine as AppScan Enterprise, but that is not a, a really good idea as part of a production install. It might You might install it that way for a POC, but certainly for production ready, you really want to have your uh, database on a separate box. And the requirement we typically have for that is a slightly larger amount of RAM, 16 gigabytes, and a, a much larger uh, space requirement. Now, that space requirement can vary depending on the usage. So a very large customer will certainly use up to a terabyte of, of space but you can get by with a lot smaller space and increase that as, as the time um, progresses. AppScan Enterprise on its own will not run without having some form of users or user interfaces and user licenses. The minimum user license is what we call AppScan Enterprise reporting users. This is someone who can create dashboards and reports and metrics and can re review results. So in the kind of um, depiction we have here, someone could run scans on AppScan standard, could load them into AppScan Enterprise, and we could have someone who could report upon them. But realistically, if we're working with AppScan Enterprise, the likelihood is for dynamic analysis, you would need to introduce what we call a dynamic analysis agent or client. This, again, would install on a separate machine, ideally. Um, it's not a good idea to install it with AppScan Enterprise itself, um, although it, again, it can install on the same box. Um, usually the dynamic scan agents are positioned within an enterprise at strategic points in the network. So it's not uncommon for a large organization to position these um, in different data centers globally. Um, the scans as they happen from the dynamic scan agent happen fairly locally. And there's a small localized database that's part of that and at the end of the scan, that dumps the information from that scan back to the main SQL database. And in fact, all the communication from the dynamic scan agent is actually through the SQL database over port 1433 as standard. It is possible to install that on different ports, but again, as standard, you would typically need to have port 1433 open for the communication from the dynamic scan agent through to AppScan Enterprise. If we are setting up like this, you would also need to have another user type. 
So this is our dynamic user. And the dynamic user is someone who can create scans on AppScan Enterprise. So he can create scans and he can review reports. Um, in this instance, if we were running scans across the enterprise, you might have multiple um, scan users. And you may also have a number of different dynamic users as well, or reporting users. So AppScan, um, from a dynamic point of view, would have an architecture like this. But if we wanted to look at it from a static or code-based scanning perspective, we would probably start with a very similar sort of footprint. We still need um, AppScan Enterprise. And in fact, for AppScan Source, which is our static solution on-prem, you have to have AppScan Enterprises as a central piece for the authentication. Um, and as a consequence, we still need to have our SQL Server. The principal additional um, database is a solid DB database, which comes with AppScan Source and installs as part of that. This database is used for storing things like the configuration and filters and custom rules for our static scanning. Um, it can be installed with AppScan Enterprise or it can be installed somewhere else, even local. Um, but usually best practices is, is to install it alongside AppScan Enterprise as a, as a central piece to the AppScan source solution. AppScan source builds itself on different clients and client-based um, usage. And the main principal client is AppScan source for analysis. It's also a desktop client. And the difference between this and um, AppScan standard is that this would run locally. So the scan will happen at the interface, much like, and I guess the same happens with AppScan standard as well. So here, the scan would happen within AppScan source. Um, it communicates through three distinct ports, ports 443, which is for the license, um, Port 2315 for the solid DB and 9443, which is the report required for AppScan Enterprise itself. In addition to the AppScan source for analysis, we also can have a client called AppScan source for automation. And this is this we, we would typically install on a build server. It's really meant for integrating into a, a CI pipeline or a build integration. So it it can work at a command line level, and it can also work with a number of plugins. It would typically integrate with um, the build process. So it might integrate with Maven, it might integrate with Bamboo, and certainly can integrate with Jenkins and a number of other sort of build environments. Um, the configuration of this would be set up in such a way that you would probably work with source for analysis to, to configure the scan and then throw it out to the build server to run at an automatic process. So as each, each time the application gets built, the scan would run. And the scan results could uh, ultimately be published back into AppScan Enterprise at the end of that. The final client that we have is for our IDEs, or the development environments. Um, we have three distinct ones for AppScan source. We have one for Eclipse. We have one for Visual Studio. And we also have ones for RAD. And these, uh, again, work very similar. The, the scan would run within the IDE itself. So if we're working with Eclipse, we would have an app scan uh, menu structure. And from within that, we can run a scan. We can look at the results. We can review the results from within the IDE itself. Again, it needs to authenticate back to AppScan Enterprise. So we need to have that connection over 9443 back to that. And we also need to obviously pick up our license, which would be from our license server. We can also still utilize the reporting user for this. So a, a static analysis a solution might look like this, where we have our AppScan reporting users who can create dashboards and metrics on top of that, um, much more at a management level. And ultimately, we can also have a deployment which has both static and dynamic and looks something like this. Um, far more complicated, but also all centered around AppScan Enterprise at the center of that. Now, this uh, depiction is working on the premise that um, FlexNet is working from the cloud, but it's also possible within version 10 to have um, 
the license server on premise, which would be very similar to the way we would have deployed this in the past with um, IBM um, solutions. And the way this would work is that the FlexNet server would be a localized license server. Again, we, we're depicting this here being installed on AppScan Enterprise, but this could also be installed on a separate box as well. Um, what's important here, though, is that the, the communication to the license server is over a user-defined port. So the port that's used is defined at the installation process, and there's um, documentation on how you would install this as a local server. And if, depending on what that port is, we would also need to mirror that port for each of the communications from each of our clients. So from our AppScan source clients and AppScan standard clients, they would need to communicate um, clearly over that port to that license server. So ultimately, um, we can run this either with an on-premise license server or a, a cloud-based um, license server. But these, really, I just wanted to depict the different types of licensing um, and, and do it in a way that sort of illustrates the way that we would run a deployment. Um, as, as I said, there is, there is a lot more information that can be available at, um, to drill into this, and there are other videos which talk around the different installations. But, I just wanted this to be a very high level sort of view of, of how this looks. So I hope you find this useful um, and, and thank you very much for listening.